Welcome to the Indie Kid Lit Podcast. Join Marty Dumas and Elena Page on their quest to help children's and middle grade authors find the right audience and sell more books. Hi, and welcome to the Indie Kid Lit Podcast. I'm Marty Dumas. And I'm Elena Page. And today we are doing our goal setting and workshopping episode for episodes 22 through 27, although we can probably leave a lot of 27 off. And I think that we should just jump right in and get started. On episode 22, we were talking to Austin Bailey. Where were you taking the J? Excuse me. Yes. Oh, I'm so, because when you Google people, Awesome, yep. Jay Bailey. That's right. Jay. Yeah. Yeah, just talk about him like he's <laughs> like my friend. <laughs> he's he's got an author name. That is important. <laughs> um, so um, what were your takeaways from Austin? I've just got to say, in case he's listening to this interview, that we're reading his latest book and we love it. Like we love it. It's gotten my 13-year-old back into reading. It's brilliant. So... <laughs> It's so good. And the kids are like, Mum, you actually know a famous author? So, see, it's amazing. If they love your book, they think you're famous in their eyes. <laughs> um, like, Austin was amazing. I think, you know, a lot of people have been coming up in Facebook groups, um, particularly because Mark Dawson has been, you know, putting put his Facebook for Authors course back online. <laughs> and... I've noticed a few people in the thread say, like, um, uh, is Facebook advertising useful for children's books for middle grade? And I've gone, go and listen to that that podcast. You can Look succeed. Look at you. Yeah. Pumping the show. <laughs> Mark does not pay me a commission. <laughs> he sure should. Mark's <laughs> awesome if you want to sponsor our podcast. We help sell. We help sell some spots on your <laughs> in your latest course. Um, I haven't done Facebook advertising yet, so um, <clears throat> I'm holding off on it for two reasons. One, because it's Christmas, and I've heard some authors turning their ads off because it's eating their money without much return. Um, and secondly, even though I bought the course ages ago, it's terrible that I'm confessing this on air, I haven't yet like watched it and I don't know how to do it. And I know that it eats your money if you don't do it properly. So um, I haven't. You're already doing Facebook ads um, quite a bit, but you've never done like what, what Austin did or how it does, which is to try to sell box sets or things like that. Have you? Yeah, I don't even have box sets. Um, I think okay. partly because I have so much, um, like our sales are mostly print. So then um, people would expect print box sets and I don't want um, to have to deal with angry people who don't understand why they're <laughs> like why it's not in print um the box set um we have toyed around with the idea of doing um some like uh like all in ones where it's like four books in one or three books in one where it's like all in one thing but um not yet for the for the box sets also we don't like sell that many ebooks so like he's killing mm -hmm. ebook box sets mm -hmm. like ebooks box yeah. sets yeah like which is like yeah I, I had to figure out like, and I think I think what he was saying is true is that like really his eBooks are appealing to adults who like mm. middle grade fiction, right? So like middle grade fiction yeah. where there's not going to be a romance thread, where like it's like a certain yeah. age or whatever. There's there's some stuff where um that makes it like a different kind of thing that you can like separately from other things as an adult, you know. So yeah. um uh I. Yeah. So for me, that's that's an interesting thing. It does, though, open up the possibility for me. My big takeaway from Austin was the being wide um, part. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. he was saying that he only advertises to Amazon, like his ads all lead people to Amazon, but that his ads are pushing sales on the other platforms. Other platforms 
which I find like really heartening. Um, and have you found that? Have you found that? Because you've gone wide now, yeah? Well, we have gone wide. Um, and it has not been very long, so I can't like totally answer. Um, mm -hmm. I will say that initially for like um the one series that is like has a lot of books in it so far, the um that that there were a bunch of sales at first, which is like cool, but then like after it, probably like just the people who were waiting to get the <laughs> get them on other platforms like got them, and then like now it's like eh, you know it's like one every couple of days. But the um the middle grade fantasy one, Jupiter Storm, yeah. like it doesn't it's not selling tons. It's 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 definitely not selling tons. I think it's like you know maybe selling like three a day on the other mm -hmm. platforms, but that's not zero. Mm, and exactly. I, when I had first started, if I had been selling three eBooks a day, I would have been dancing real hard. So like, yeah. that's not, you know, so that's, and, and so it maybe is the, um, I don't know what it is. I can't, I can't answer, but that did give me confidence, which is very useful. And also I really want to have us have a show where we just talk about how we've adapted Facebook strategy, Facebook advertising strategies for middle grade. Um, because I mm -hmm. actually, unlike, so like when everybody else was like, um, cause like even Mark Dawson will say, oh, well now that he's kind of taught a bunch of people how to do it. I've heard him say this, mm -hmm. um, hopefully it's not slander. <laughs> um, that now that he's taught a bunch of people how to do this, like that the costs have gone up, right? Like that, um, right. you, you know, it's like more people can do it. But I honestly don't think that a lot of, because I think that a lot of the things that help you adapt Facebook advertising for middle grade and children's books actually helps you to laser focus your audience. So I don't think that it will negatively impact other people unless you were just trying to ride the coattails of another person's mm -hmm. audience, mm -hmm. which um, is probably pretty hard to do because, um, you don't show up as a person who can be followed until you've had like a ridiculous amount of success. So, I mean, in, in right. the advertising thing. So then um, I have tons of authors that I'd love to target, like trad pub authors that I would love to target who are not <laughs> available mm -hmm. to target on those lists. Yeah. And like, do you think there'd be less um, competition in middle grade too? Like, I mean, I'm sure there's still heaps of books, but I mean, I, I know, first of all, you know, a lot of indies give up because they, you know, they've done it for a certain amount of years and then they're like, well, clearly that it's impossible to sell them, so I'm moving on. And, you know, like there, I've read in, in some articles that the key to success is to be the one that hangs in there the longest. <laughs> and, I say um, that to people all the time. <laughs> this is a long game. Yeah. It is a long game. But, yeah. So, um, but you know, again, I want people to have joy in their lives. So like, yeah. if you feel like something, if, if you feel like it's making you miserable to hang in there, like if it's not meeting your mission, if it's not, you know what, that's a thing, right? Um, if it's not meeting your mission, that's a thing jumping forward to crystal, right? Mm -hmm. In our list. Um, what she's doing is super mission driven, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so then um, I'm sure that she enjoys her success, but like for people who are like, ah, I, I wanna get out of this, that's totally cool. It Maybe it's because it's not meeting your core mission of being a writer, right? So like if your core mission of being a writer could be satisfied, like writing for another age category or writing in another genre, then, and, it's giving you more joy because you're like selling more copies of the book, then like, I feel like that's okay. Like go for it. But like, if there's something that is about your core mission, that means that you need to be writing for children, then mm -hmm. like hang in there. Yeah. <laughs> like it's a yeah. longer game. Hang in there. Um, yeah. yeah. Cool. Good advice. Yeah. All right. I'm hanging. I'm hanging in there. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Miss, I had like a mysterious for like a month, 10,000 downloads a day of my <laughs> children's oh my God. I, don't, I don't know what happened. And then Amazon pulled the book down because I had my website listed on my description page, which I thought I was allowed to do. And then it killed my downloads. <laughs> Anyways, oh. I'm having a whinge. Yeah. You know okay. what I say about whinging? Okay. Monsters yeah. eat whiny children. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> I remember you know that. what that means if you've listened to our <laughs> earlier podcast. <laughs> so as far as like you were saying about um, Facebook ads working well for middle grade, I actually suspect that Facebook ads might work better for picture books because, really? um, yes, because peop they're short. And people, a lot of people are afraid of, um, I don't want to say afraid of reading, but more willing to read mm -hmm. things that are short and like check them out, right? So then like also if you're like looking to get um, uh, like reviewers or like bloggers to check out your book, if you've got a 24 or 32 page picture book, I think it's faster and easier to get that done than if they need to make their way through your 60,000 word middle grade novel. So um, anyway, there's plus and minuses on that. All right. Um, so yeah, I think I would love to have, and so if there are other people who are like actively, and I don't think that you need to necessarily have a huge amount of what like monetary success where you're like deeply in the black or whatever mm -hmm. on your advertising, I think it would be useful for us to have like two people or three who are adapting their Facebook ads from it. I think that that would be really like if I were if I were just starting out doing it for me, that yeah. would be a very I'd be like, oh my gosh, thank you somebody else for doing some of the work for me. <laughs> I love to have shoulders to stand on. So um, like I'm sure you'll still need to adapt it, but I think that that would be um, a useful show topic. So we'll we'll try to investigate that for future. Cool. Cool. So Tara Ellis, are we moving on? Mm -hmm. um, so Tara was like taught us a lot about how to get a book bub. Hasn't worked for me yet. I did finally start filling in those comments section, which uh, I always ignored until her interview. <laughs> I'm like, you're not meant to write anything in there, are you? And then I realized, oh, you are meant to write in there. Um, and so, you know, I tried, I even won a little award for lolly and the lollipop and i put it in there why do you say little in front of the award well it was fifth you know like you don't get a medal when you get fifth but it was still an award it's listed on the reader's favorite website it's there and you know i thought that might work and it was like nah, no book bub. <laughs> so i haven't ever had one but you've had how many have you had a few or just one i had two so uh -huh. um again like blind luck um, so I I got them both times, just happened, I think, to do um, in low times, which I think is another thing to think about mm -hmm. is like, um, I didn't do it like in the run up to Christmas or like, you know, whatever, when I'm sure like everybody is trying, or maybe people don't do them in the run up to Christmas because maybe they're like pretty confident they can sell full price books. I don't know. But um, uh, I think that they were pretty low times because they responded really quickly. Um, uh, and I think that in times where they have a higher volume of books that it probably takes them a longer time to get back to you and yeah. say yes or no, you know? Um, yeah. so, so I think, so that was, that was just lucky, but, um, I did not find them super useful. The book, book mm. ad, the book, book d feature deals. So, um, or the ads, honestly, but that's cool. Mm. Um, uh, the, yeah. So I, 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 after the second book bub that I have, I haven't applied to book bub since, mm -hmm. okay. um, but I'm thinking that it's been like a, like, I'm in a, like a totally different place as an author. So maybe it's more useful now to have so many eyes on my books than it would, than it was back then to have so many mm -hmm. eyes on my books where I really didn't have a place for them to go. Like I had, um, uh, just one other book and it wasn't even out already. I think on the day of the, of the book bub. Um, uh, so then, or it was like almost out. It was up for pre-order, I think, um, with like a couple days left on the day of the book bub. And I'd have to go back and check the dates because I don't remember exactly. But um, so maybe it might be more useful now, but I, I it, ha it hasn't made its way back to the top of my to-do list. But I do agree with, um, I did use the comments box both times. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Um, and in the comments box, I'll like throw in what I said in those things. Like I put in um, the number of reviews that it had already gotten in the comments mm -hmm. box, which I'm sure they go in and check, but maybe they go in and check faster if you put it in there. So I put in the number of reviews that it already had in the comments box. And I put um, like um, the bloggers who had already featured it 
on their blog oh, nice. in, okay. in the in the comments box. And also it had um I used so at uh we had publishers weekly reviews, neither of them starred for um uh, <laughs> for, for both of the books. And so I um for one of the books I used a pull quote from the publisher's weekly review. Um so maybe, but in there, um, but they went in and found the publishers weekly reviews because they use pull quotes from publishers weekly reviews in both of the, like when oh. they write up the copy, they use public the pull quotes from publishers weekly in both of the copies. So maybe that helps. Interesting. Maybe that's the. Maybe that's the. Yeah. Maybe that's the thing. There is a book, and I haven't read it yet, but I have bought it, and I will put it in the show notes because I can't remember what it's called. But it's all about how to definitely get a book bub. Have you heard of that book? Mm -mm. Yeah, there's a book. Someone said, "Oh, thank God I read that book in one of the Facebook groups because then now I got one and I've never been able to get one for years." And I'm like, "Buy the book." Mm. So I bought the book. But like most of the things, I haven't yet read the book. Um, so I will put that in the show notes um, in case it's helpful to anyone. And yes, the author can thank us later because we've just tripled his sales. Um, <laughs> quadrupled <laughs> um yeah so maybe you know you're right i bet there's stuff like that in there probably about how to use the comments <laughs> which is which is gold so yeah good point yeah, yeah. Um, and also of note both times they changed my category oh. so i put um the first book in as children's and they changed it to middle grade and I put the second book in as middle grade and they changed it to children's. Really? Yeah. And was it um, the Jaden series both times or not? No, the first time was Jayla and the Wolves. Okay. And I put that as children's and they changed it to middle grade. And then uh, Jaden I put as middle grade and they changed it to children's. Interesting. Huh. Hmm. Hmm. Hmm, there you go. All right. Are we anything else on Tara that we want to discuss? Are we moving along the list? We are. Um, she was super excited about her um, YA stuff. Um, I think that that yeah. stuff was giving her joy. So I'm glad that she, um, like, you know, has that. And also, I, I think there's a, a lesson in that where she's like, um, I guess, so yes, I do have another thing from Tara um, that she, um, has joy in writing her middle grade mysteries and so i think they're not selling as well as her ya right but i think probably her ya is where her like the majority of her income comes in but the um she's still writing her middle grade mysteries because she loves them and they yeah. give her happiness and um there's something to be said about that right like which I, I feel like we discount a lot of times, like we are humans who are living right now, like we should mm -hmm. get to have some of that. So that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Great point. Um, yeah. All right. Um, Kevin. Kevin Tomlinson with the husky, cute voice, which. Oh my gosh, your husband's <laughs> going to be so, your husband's going to be so. All right. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so audiobooks um i haven't yet had a chance to use findaway voices <laughs> only because i haven't done any new audiobooks i've been there have been a lot of airplanes flying over and i keep saying i'll do them at night the next lot of books but then at night i haven't because it's been so busy um so i haven't had a chance to use them yet have you um so i put all the first in series for our uh like uh small press in find away voices and um like maybe a week or so ago they started emailing us saying there was like one more step and honestly i hadn't um i had not realized that it wasn't done <laughs> like oh, well, um, see they weren't up they haven't been up so i guess they haven't been up this whole time so oh. i don't know how that's going and apparently we have one more step um, which um, probably I need to be the person to make happen because I was the person who put them in there in the first place. So um, I need to get to that on my to-do list. So I guess I'll have to okay. report back about that at another time. All right. um, cool. cool. All right. And then we had Darcy. Who's always super packed full of information. So packed and always where it's like, oh, okay. 
can we have you like one more time? Because <laughs> we didn't even get to this part. Um, so um, yeah, I think we want to have her back on about picture book formatting. So um, mm -hmm. for eBooks. So then like, let's stay tuned about that. But um, what were your takeaways from Darcy this time? Um, about, you know, sending those review copies to, she had some suggestions about where to send them, which, you know, I, I had never done before. So that's something I definitely want to add to my to-do list. Um, and I loved her, I mean, she had a lot of stuff, but uh, her researching what's popular, you know, like she's so um, key, dialed in, isn't she, to like what, not just what kids are reading, what schools are loving, what librarians are into, what hot topics are happening, like so that she's almost like finger on the pulse, you know? Yeah. Um, and yeah. I need to do more of that rather than I've decided I'm going to write a story about hamburgers. <laughs> just because <laughs> I had one for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, yeah, like I, which I think a lot of authors do, you know, or the, our kids do something and we're like, every child should know about that or is into that. And so we write a book about it and we realise that actually, no, it was just our own unique little petal, not all <laughs> the other children in the world. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and the themes and all of that. So that was, I found that really a strong takeaway and something I want to do more of. Yeah. So, um, I, so one of the, one of our team members, um, Candace, um, at Plum Street Press, um, like I've just asked her to like literally listen through that episode and make a large checklist so we can <laughs> see which things, cause there are definitely some of the things that Darcy said that I know that we're doing. Right. Yeah. Um, but some of the things that she said, I was like, Oh, wait, are we doing that? Do we mm -hmm. like talk about that, but then like not actually follow through on it? Like what, you know, so then um, I was like, you know what, scratch that. Like, let's just like make it a clean, like it's it's a a, a checklist. Like we need to go through and and make sure that we're doing um, all of all of these things. So I could probably, mm -hmm. I can probably even share that checklist. <laughs> <laughs> when, yes, it, um, when it's uh, <laughs> when it's done uh, and um, and maybe maybe we can add a few like we're, we're, we're getting more or we're getting better at our jobs as small publishers um, and so um, we're getting a lot more um, organized like we always did a lot of things but it was um, not like in a super uh, I don't want to say that it was disorganized because it really wasn't, but it wasn't methodical is what it, it was. Yes, that's the and right so, word. Yeah. Yeah. So then um, uh, we're getting more methodical also because it helps like as we bring people on who are like being paid to be helpers. If you're paying someone to be a helper, yeah. you need to be able to tell them exactly what to do. <laughs> And not be yeah. like just generally. Here's the outcome um, that I'm looking for, um, which can help, which can work depending on the person. But you're more likely to be able to find someone to help you if you can tell them exactly what to do. So, um, and I think yeah. that that's a thing that Darcy has. I know that that's a thing that Darcy does, and that Darcy's good at, and that you can probably know that Darcy is good at from talking to her is being able to give super clear directions to a person who's going to support her in a thing. And so, like, she's gotten a lot of a lot out of her assistant because probably she has given a lot to her assistant um, as well. So that's cool too. Yeah, um, so systems in place, you know, like that. Um, and, and also, you know, like she, she's got that, that traditional publishing background. So she wants to appear just like and do the same things that a traditional publisher would do, despite the fact that she's, you know, um, a small publishing house. Um, at the same time, I guess... When I listen to Darcy, you know, as a little one, as one little person without an assistant and, you know, with fairly youngish children, like even if I take a few things away from her, like it still makes my business better. But you're right. If you could literally sit down with her and like steal her system, <laughs> like right. it would. Well, I was trying to get that when we were talking to her and she was saying that she just holds all of that in her brain. I which know. Is even more impressive like <laughs> i'm like imagining that she has like flow charts like and yeah. she's got like okay on 
you know, negative day, eight, day 87, yeah. you know, pre-launch day 87, you do this. And she's like, no, I just kind of, and I'm like, dang it. <laughs> dang I think it. it's just her personality style too and the yeah. way she operates, you know, which I think we can all learn from because for me, I'm like this sort of crazy, a bit scatter, you know, all over the place sort of person. Um, and it's a reminder that you do need systems and that there is a system to publishing. And the more you have one, actually, the more it frees you up to be creative the rest of yeah. the time <laughs> rather than, oh, I just did this today. It didn't seem to work. You know, I'm going to do this tomorrow. It didn't seem to work. Yeah. I think, too, the, the idea, that idea um, is freeing creatively, not just because it frees you up with time, but also it's understandable when you're not writing. So like, I always have this idea that like when we're launching a book and it's not just my books, right? Like we're, we launch other people's books too, but I always have this feeling like when we're launching books that I should get the same daily word count that I get on right. any other day, which yeah. is not true. And so then if we had, or maybe it still feels like it's true, but like, it probably isn't like when like, um, like I have the t my personal to-do list itemized. I'm like, I have literally 32 items on this list. One of them is right. <laughs> and the other 30 have to do with launching this, the book that is coming yeah. out. Um, I should be okay. Like if I had a, I feel like if I had a system, I would also be able to free myself to be like, you know what? In these two weeks, your work count is not gonna be a thing. Don't even worry about it. It's That's cool. <laughs> um, which, yeah. you know, for me would be very emotionally freeing. I feel really guilty because it's like, it's like, I like it. So like, if I'm not getting to it, like, I feel like, wait a minute, do I not like it? <laughs> That's exactly what I've been doing in the last month. I'm like, why are they doing words? Forget the fact that I'm formatting five books and, you know, right, launching yeah. a couple and doing pre-orders and I'm like, what? what's wrong with me? Don't I want to write the second book? <laughs> you know, I had to really sit and go, maybe I don't want to write it. But it's like my characters when I go visit them every day are like, oh, so you remember us now, do you? I thought you were too busy, you know, like doing other things. Maybe we're not in the mood to talk to you after all. <laughs> you know, it's a bit of that. <laughs> so you're right. That's a good thank you for saying that, Marty. That's made me feel a lot better. That's funny. <laughs> um, so I no, that's I mean, because it's like it's really true, but like I'm also like actively imagining you and your daily conversation with your characters. Totally. Who are apparently all sassy. <laughs> Very <laughs> full of attitude, these teenagers. <laughs> Very sassy. <laughs> And they, um, okay, so that's that's that that was fun. Okay, so um, uh, we also have um, Crystal who is doing just like amazing stuff, and we definitely have to get her back on because we did not get around to like one of the core questions of um that we meant to talk to her about. So I um, we need to chat back with her. But what were your big takeaways from Crystal? I I loved. The, uh, I love that she was talking about finding your target market, you know, who your reader is, and she made the distinction, it is not your family and friends, <laughs> you know. Um, and, you know, by going out in person and getting that visceral feedback from people actually coming up and picking up a book and making comments, you know, like about the price or, you know, anything, how that feedback like informs, you know, what she does in a way that online doesn't because we can make the assumption, you know, no one bought the book, maybe it's really bad. And, right. you know, I, I have heard in podcasts too that in person um, readers or, you know, potential buyers are much more forgiving. Like if you don't have the blurb perfect or it's not like, you know, I just perfect. heard that yesterday. Was it on the science fiction and fantasy marketing podcast? It might have been. Did you listen to that? Oh I, my gosh, I, we're going to start like, to doing all show. exactly the same things because we're like listening to the same shows. We all that's listen funny. to each other's shows. Okay, that's um, so funny. Okay, keep going. But yeah, right, no, no, so, I was hearing that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So it's, you know, like she gets that, that's, you know, real live feedback and then alters stuff to make it fit her audience, which, yeah. 
I need to get out there. That's what I get. keep getting, get out, do at least one face-to-face, -face, get some people to at least, and not be scared of what they say. Like if they go, oh, yeah, um, it's better to know that than to be pushing a book that may never sell, you know? Yeah. So I want to say another thing too, like that connects, that extends the thought that you just had. So like um, probably there is someone that your book is for. So like if you are at um, uh, a, a, an in-person event and no one at that in-person event likes your book, it it is because it's not for them, but there probably is a person that it is for. And so then that tells you that that was not the right audience it gives you a lot of information so like it can give you like a okay well i'm just gonna check like if you okay we're going back to mission again which i really <laughs> feel like crystal is very mission driven if your Good mission point. is to, to so like let's say that you are like at um like a, a a book festival that is specifically for um the group that you are trying to target right and and you have a and it's like meeting your mission so like crystal mission is about like being able to like empower African-American children. So like if Crystal yeah. went to a book festival that was for African-American children, where, you know, hundreds of African-American families with small children walked through, picked up her book, looked at it, put the book back down, smiled, said thank you and moved on, right? Right. Then maybe for Crystal, because her mission is to be able to um, uplift that audience, right? Um, and meet the needs of that audience, then Crystal, in that case, in this case, it's a hypothetical because obviously people love her books. But um, uh, in that case, she might be like, huh, this book is not doing what it's supposed to do because my mission is to uplift this group of people. But if, if, the, if her mission was not to uplift and like meet the needs of that group of people, then I would think what she should do in that scenario is be like, so this is not resonating with these people. I'm going to try some different people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm going to try a different right. kind of thing. So okay. I think I think for me it feels more like what's your what's your goal? Like why why are you doing this? Um uh, well, you know, and I know you talked about this too on your interview because you were, you know, our final interview. Um <laughs> and so many people loved your interview. In fact, yeah. someone it was like Karen called me some cool words. I really wish I could quote them, but I can't remember them. It was something about a persevering journalist um, <laughs> oh, yeah, she did call you some cool words. You should write them down. I'm going to go back and find them. I remember they were so good. I was like, I love those words. Um, but, you know, like, for me, I always, and look, the monsters are going to come and eat me again because I'm whining. But um, the whining me is like, but you guys know your mission. It's obvious. It, it doesn't help me when I listen to you going on about find your target readers. I'm like, I don't know who mine are, <laughs> you know, because I think not okay. such a distinct group, you know, like it, it's, it's not sort of a cultural group or it's not. A, well, let's pause because Austin has the exact same thing. He also so is very mission authors. driven. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he is. He he's, is. Yeah. he's very mission driven. He says that he's, he's trying to find, give books to the people who miss Harry Potter. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's okay. that's super mission driven, right? It is. So then like he knows he knows exactly who he's talking to. He knows exactly what he's writing for. He loves those books. He knows what people love about those books and he doesn't need to like copy the book. He didn't like make a new wizard school book, right? Like it's like there's a thing that people love about those books and 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 that's what he's like, "Okay, well so then this is what's driving me." You know what I mean? So then like And it's um it's funny that you say that cuz you know I said how my son's reading his Simon Fader book. And my, my son has stopped reading since Harry, he's read all the Harry Potters. And exactly. he's 13 and still wears his cape every or his cloak, whatever he keeps his telling me. Don't thing. call it a cape. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's like finally he's gone, ah, another book. So it's funny that he said that. That's his mission because there you go. He hit the mark. I mean, he said that. <laughs> I'm not I can't that even remember that. him saying yeah. that. So there you yeah. go. <laughs> Okay, so how not in his exact words, but that was how they loosely translate it in my mind. So, so going back to your expertise and your interview, like how would you suggest quote the rest of us find our mission and target group? Like, how is there a process to do that? Do we look at our books and kind of go, what are they all got in common? Are they meant to have something in common? Like, what's how do we do it? 
how do you know, like, for example, you've written two distinctly different books or three, four, five, whatever, a whole lot. Um, as, as I'm saying one, I'm thinking of your other titles. Um, but, like, there's something that missions them all together, right? Right. So um, I don't know that this is replicable. So for me, the the uh, it might be. For me, the, th the thing is, like, there was a need that I didn't have filled. So like, mm -hmm. it bothers me how many stories I read where it's casually mentioned that the girl doesn't, isn't that good at figures or doesn't really like math. Like that's the cute humanizing thing. And I'm like, dude, can we stop doing that? <laughs> First of all, I have always loved math. Like number one, yeah. Like and, yeah. and 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 second of all, like you're literally teaching them that they're not supposed to, mm -hmm. like at a like, but in a, in the most subtle, like <laughs> insidious mm -hmm. way possible. So I'm like, I'm like, I w can write stories, and my stories will not do that. A because I think that's not cool, and B because like for me, that's a that's a a missing like that's a a need, right? So like um. Uh, my uh, story, The Little Human, um, which um, we can talk about another time, but I, um, it has three parts to it, the story. And um, we published the first part initially. And um, then I was like, I, we should pull it down because A, the first part of it ends, um, tragically like um like the little mermaid does right but that's not actually the problem there was something that was like bothering me about it um and it's not the tragic ending because i'm like people can like some stories are sad and that's okay right mm -hmm. um but um because it without all three like she doesn't actually have her full like she doesn't come into her power right so then i was like can we pull it and re put it out when all three of them, all three parts are done. Um, yeah. Because at the end of the first book, spoilers for anybody who's ever gonna read The Little Human, but at the end of the first book, um, I mean, whatever, it's fine, y'all are fine. <laughs> um, uh, at the end of the first book, she um, chooses not to go back with her family. She leaves her father. Um, she, she, okay. she she He's crying on the shore and she just leaves him. But um, in my mind, um, like, however she feels in the moment, because I'm also, like, cool about people's feelings, right? So, like, your feelings just are your feelings. Like, they just are to me. And so then, um, like, I feel like y you uh, can own them however they are, right? So then that was how she felt in the moment. So then that, but also, um, I could see that in a certain way, it seems like she's been acted upon by magic to feel okay. that way. I don't think of it like that, but I could see that it could be read like that. Right. And because I can see that it could be read like that, I was like, that would make it seem like she did not have agency. Like a bad magic happened uh, to her I and see. then she didn't make her own decision, which is not how I think of it. So then I was like, I don't want them to be out again until all three of them are there so that you can really clearly see that it's not a bad magic that it's her and it's her decision making blah 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 so um so then yeah. we pull that but anyway so in that um why was i talking about that there was a reason um mission oh right, right. so then um in those stories though i remember somebody like like taking a look at the cover and and being like um oh my gosh you're like writing a frippy like girl's book i was like wow you clearly don't know me or my core mission, which is cool. Cause like you, everybody doesn't know you as soon as they meet you. Right. But like, there's no way, like, I can't, like, I'm not going to be able mm. to do that. Um, even though there is value okay. in that. Um, and I don't mean necessarily monetary value. I mean, like in the sense that it validates some people and feeling comfortable in who they are. Right. It's not who I am. So then that's not, Right. So then for me, it would be not validating the thing. So even a story like that for me, like has that part of the mission in it. Right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Where we're like um, I, things that I feel like are important to be out in the 
in the in the world so yeah. um like agency personal agency like um being able to like love <laughs> um knowing how things work and understanding how things work like that for me all that comes in part of the mission and is a thing as a teacher and a parent that i'm always looking for in stories and not often finding gotcha um also i read today in this post i think it was from j a huss I think I got that right. Um, and it, like it, it wasn't her saying it, like different authors have been giving great tips throughout the week. And today's author was talking about finding your brand. And I wonder if that's sort of a bit of an overlap, it's a little bit similar. And she was saying, you know, write down some words that describe you as a person, as a writer, um, and then write, like, look at all your books in a row, all of them, everything you've ever written, even if they seem unrelated, and see what's common about them, like what you were just saying. You know, they all have, you know, strong, like, know themselves, female characters um, or whatever, you know, those key things. She said you'll see things pop out you didn't even realise was in across the board because unconsciously, like you said, you're writing things that you believe in and stand for. And she said, then look to see where the commonalities are. And that's kind of your brand, what you stand that for. That sounds exactly so brand mission, right? So then I guess like if you feel like you are actually meeting a need by putting more into that, then I, I think maybe that's where the crossover between brand and, and mission happen. Um, so yeah, I think that 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 works really well. And also it helps you to know how to find your people, like how to say the things that will find your, find your people. Right. Okay. And Ooh. to be okay with when people are like, ah, it's not for me. It's like, oh yeah, no, it's definitely not for everybody. <laughs> but what it's happens cool. if one of, what happens if one series, like, you know, when I look at my meditation adventure series, they're, like such a unique little petal, you know, like there's such a unique thing. And and then now my books are sort of going off in a bit of a different direction. But do you think that there'll still be tie-ins in your experience? Do you think there'll there still be something? There probably will be. There probably will be. But again, you actually know who needs and wants those books. So that yeah. may be a case where it's not you like that that those books are mission driven and and you yeah. know the children that they're helping too. So then yeah like it's almost a disservice if you don't keep talking to the parents of the children that that is helping right so like right. i i know from having like had a glance at your reviews um, and reading the things like i know that parents of kids who have anxiety and adhd have like reached yeah. out to you and said thank you right yeah. so like you're you're like they're telling you who they are so mm -hmm. then if you want more of those, like that can be part of your mission. But if it's not, if it doesn't give you joy to meet the need, that need, then don't make that your mission. You know, it's like you maybe right. found that audience, but maybe that's not your, your mission, you know, um, something else, you'll know it when you, when you hit it. Right. Um, but in mm -hmm. the meantime, that would be, that's a great way to find an audience either way. Right. <laughs> Yeah, no, great suggestion. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. That's very wise words, Marty's what wise All right. corner. Marty's wise words. All right, words. more takeaways from Crystal. I um we are upping our game on our so we've always had like light online products. We had for a while um and Amazon merch account. Um, mm -hmm. Amazon merch is like super touchy and kept issuing us warnings and takedown notices about our own products. <laughs> Why? So like literally we were selling t-shirts with the book covers on them. Yeah. And which was great on Amazon because you could get like a little upsell, which is like part of what Crystal's done. She's super diversified her product line as well. She's got books, but she's also got a bunch of she's intentionally diversified mm -hmm. that product line right um and so she's got you know birthday party supplies and she's got like she's just got a bunch of things going in addition t-shirts and mugs and all the stuff that the rest of us do when we had um and when we had an amazon merch account the t-shirts 
appear on Amazon. It, I think maybe it does more than just t-shirts, but at the time that we had it, it only did t-shirts. So the t-shirts mm -hmm. appear on Amazon. And so then we had would have the book titles in them and it would appear then um, as a related product if people searched by name, right? So then um, if people search for the book by name, the t-shirt would also come up. And so then I think enough people bought them like that that then it appeared as an upsell at the end, which really sold them. Um, and, but they kept issuing us um, uh, takedown notices about our own stuff and like giving us warnings, like warning, if you get another takedown notice, your account is gonna be disabled. So eventually I was like, you know what? This is like too much drama. Uh, <laughs> I was like, this is, I can't, I can't emotionally deal with this. Um, and so then um, we haven't um, dealt with them since, but talking with Crystal actually, um, so we have like, um, just through some, like, um, we have like one small, um, uh, like, uh, like an individual, like a small family that does like makes products or whatever, who does some of them. And then, but like, for the most part, they've been like through just like big, um, POD services. But I think that that, um, uh, has reengaged our internal conversation about, merchandise and merchandise. like being a lot more serious about it. And I think actually that we're gonna probably convert our, um, which we have resisted so far as a group, the um, Plum Street Press website, converting it to an e-commerce site, which it has not been to date. Um, nice. uh, so that, you know, to be able to support some of that. So yeah. that's a big takeaway for me from Crystal as well as um, the idea that, at the start of things that Crystal had someone who really, really believed in her, um, like a lot, <laughs> um, her mom. And I don't, I mean, I'm sure everybody's mom believes in them or like whatever family issues are happening, but like, it seems like her mom really not just said it in words or like in hugs, but like really put herself out there and like mm -hmm. made Crystal go out there and like, um, really like truly believed in her in a way that like inspired, I mean, maybe Crystal, she seems really great. So like, maybe she would have had yeah. a ton of confidence anyway, but like that, I don't think that that could have hurt. And I, and I feel like that's a thing that um, I, I would say we underestimate, but I don't think we underestimate. I think that that's the reason why so many people are really keen on trying to make sure that they get traditionally published. Um, so like um, I'm in the society, I love, and I'm in the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, and I keep recommending it to people because I feel like it's important, not just for like our craft, but also like connecting with people and and like legitimizing yourself to yourself, right? Like it's, anyway, it's cool, but um in the Society for Children's Book Writers and Illustrators, like where I am, there are a lot of people who, um, like they make really great livings, like at the things that they do already. Like they probably don't need to make money on their children's books. I mean, I'm sure they wouldn't be against it, but like they, they probably don't need it. You know what I mean? Um, but I, But probably what is happening though is the need for someone to say that thing that you wrote is good enough <laughs> and is amazing. Yeah good enough for us to put energy and effort and money behind. So then it's a, a validation thing that, um, it's probably my own issues that makes me be like, I'm, I'm not, I wanna say, I wanna like say, it's not bad thing to want to seek validation. So that's probably, <laughs> that's probably me talking and not like knowing that other people have a problem seeking validation, but, um, uh, like, I feel like that's okay, but maybe having a publisher pick you is not the only way to have that happen. Like there are other ways and Crystal never like did trad pub. She only did um, indie publishing, but like she's had amazing success and yeah. her validation seems to have come first from her mom, but then, you know, from increasingly large audiences over time. All right, so I, I like I will pause yeah. my crystal love so that you can get a word in. Your crystal love knows also that's, <laughs> that's that's really true, you know. And when I think of my other pen name, um, where I had used I had a publisher, and when I was writing my second book, my first one I, I self published. Um, my second one, I it, it took me two years to write it, and then I found a publisher, and the publisher found me. I forget how it happened. And 
they said we love the concept We because I had a cover. We love the cover. We love, love, love it. We'll, we'll take you on. And I remember going, oh, my God, maybe my book really is good. <laughs> and then I finished it, <laughs> which was the thing. Um, and, you know, like that, it was. It was like maybe it's good because if there's no one to tell you, and, you know, you're sitting in your bedroom, your lounge room, wherever, and you're writing a book and no one's read it. Like, how are you to know? Like, really? Even when you've published it, how are you really to know whether a bookstore would want to sell it? Like, even if children say they love it, it's a very different thing, isn't it, walking it into a bookstore um, because they're business people. You know, they look at is it going to sell commercially? It might be a gorgeous little book. And that, you know, her mother was there to, you know, give her that little shove in the right direction makes right. a big, big difference. And, you know, now I'm no longer published traditionally even with that book, but now in, in that area of my publishing, I have enough true fans that it's true. Like even now if I'm like, oh, who am I? The true fans are like, where's the next book? <laughs> you know, like they're... Um, they keep you afloat. But at the very beginning, how hard is it for yeah. any of us to get that, you know, like yeah. what you were saying in your interview with your little, um, you know, small publishing press and how they believed in you and, you know, kept pushing you along a little, didn't they? Yeah, 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 that is very true. Um, yeah, so I feel like, but like how is that replicable for other people if they're not going the and like honestly like most people are not going to be traditionally published or they're going to be traditionally published in a way that ends up being disappointing um to them uh although there are like that that's not to discourage anyone because if that's a part of your dream process then like that's it's okay like that's going to happen and then you'll try again right because like you just keep going <laughs> like if it's a thing that you really need or really want so um uh but like what are some other ways of people being able to so like crystal's um mom passed away but um she's still getting that um what she needs now because she has a lot of people who've read her books but like it seems like also a thing that she got um another way she might have been able to get that which she got with the encouragement of her mom was by going to all those in-person events she said that she used to do them yeah. all right and getting feedback from people in person she said really like she's like you'll know people will tell you when your price is too high people will tell you you know like um yeah uh so um that kind of stuff so maybe that's a uh like I mean, it's to me that would be extra scary. I really hate those events. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, uh, yeah, I, I think you. Uh, you know, for me, you you. It's lovely if we have that person, that external person. But the reality is that some many people won't. Um, and ultimately, you have to be that person for yourself. And the good thing about you being that person for yourself is that um, you can't die. Well, if you die, you die. But, you know, like, it, it, I mean, even Crystal said, right, when her, when her mum passed away, she struggled for a little period and then her sister stepped in a little bit, you know. Um, I'm assuming she's a little bit younger than I am. Um, and, you know, youth has something to do about it too because when you're younger, it's harder sometimes to really believe in yourself it's hard when you're old as well <laughs> but you i think my takeaway is listen to what crystal said take that on board and now you know be crystal's mum for myself does that make sense yeah. so yeah. you know push myself into that bookstore and if the bookstore rejects um you know my first book was really wasn't laid out properly because i didn't know you know back then there was no self-publishing didn't have the proper borders there was no vellum for print and um and i remember bookstores saying like we would never accept this it's it's crap and i had printed 1000 copies of that book um and um and i remember thinking oh no but then you know when i did like live you know events um people didn't know that you know, yeah, like people, people, would, people, were okay. <laughs> people would open the book and go, it's beautiful with the paper that it's on. It's so stunning. Oh, my God, I love this book. And they'd buy it and I'd be like, you know what, lesson learned. You know, it doesn't mean you can't sell it or you can't support what you've done and that it can't still be great even if it's not great 
in the bookstores, do you know? Like, I don't right, work yeah. there, you know? So, yeah, just keep yeah. supporting yourself. There, yeah, there are some standards that are industry standard because it, like, improves readability. Exactly. And there are some standards that are industry standards because they're industry standards. Okay. Yeah. And then that's, you know, it's like, yeah. okay, all right. <laughs> um, yeah. Which is like, it's it not like you stumbled across some of those things where it's like, nope, regular people just like it. So that's good. <laughs> oh, but, like, at first, I was gutted. You know, I was like, oh my gosh, this book that I put so much love and and it's unsellable. Like, are you kidding me? And I have so many of them in my garage, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah. So in, 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 in that for, for me that, um, like my husband, um, um, is not my target audience, which is another thing that Crystal will, will, will say, um, she's like, your, your friends and family are not your target audience. <laughs> so true. Absolutely. Probably they're not. Um, but, um, for the Jade and Tucson books, right? Like I, um, those books are very hard for me to write. They are not easy for me to write that they come out. Like when I write the stories, I'm long winded. Like they come out way longer than they're supposed to be. And then it, it takes so long for me to like cut them back and like re whatever. Anyway, so they're hard for me to write, but, um, uh, so like, anyway, it takes a lot of emotional energy to do that then. Right. So then, um, my, um, uh, kids read them first. Right. Um, and then I, well, at first I was like either reading them to, or asking my husband to read them. So the first one he really liked, he was like, Oh, wow, this is actually good, which fine. Cool. I'm, <laughs> I'm going to leave the, I'm going to leave that part off the, I, the you know, I'm not going to like address the actually in there or whatever, but it's cool. So then the, um, the second one also, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This one's really great. So then the third one, he like um he he will say that he he definitely he was like he had like a, a viscerally negative reaction to this book that i had like spent so much time and energy like trying to make so great and honestly it's my favorite one of all of them <laughs> and um and he was like i just i just uh it's just uh, he, he he he's not perfect i was like <laughs> yeah people aren't perfect like that's not he's like he's struggling and i just say it just makes me uncomfortable i don't like it um <laughs> and so like i i like had like a lot of doubt about that um and then um i was like it took me like a couple of weeks to remember that he is not my target audience mm, good point yeah and his favorite book yeah. is the worst seller. Yeah. Book two. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so then, you know, again, he's he's not he he's so then you can't like that the, if the if the person that you're talking to like you have to take all that with a grain of salt mm -hmm. and try not to let it interrupt your soul, um, yeah. because like you were saying, the validation needs to come from. Um, within and, and maybe is a little bit easier to do when you know who it is that you're talking to. It might be more personally gutting if you yeah. don't know who you're aiming it at. So that brings us back around, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Very good. Nicely done. So we're pretty much done, but and we're also pretty much out of time. Are there um things? Oh yeah, there are admin things that we should say. So we are uh, this is our last full episode for this calendar year in 2017, but in the next episode, um, which will air on December 28th, is that the right day? Okay. That's and the next episode, um, that, which will air on December 28th, it's going to be a short one, but we will, um, just broadcast our publish writing and publishing goals for 2018 and do um, brief updates on how we did on our goals from 2017. And we would invite slash strongly encourage others to do the same and um, maybe share out their goals in the comments. Or if you don't like to put your stuff in public <laughs> where people can see it, then you can also email it to us um, privately and we can just be your private friends on the side. Um, your uh, your accountability really buddies. That, <laughs> is that the official language for that? <laughs> if you get an email at the end of 2018 that says, did you do this, 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 and this? 
<laughs> so if you want are wanting to email us, you can email us at um is it it has a the in it, doesn't it? Is it the indie killer podcast at gmail.com? Hold on, let me look at it. It it's not coming up fast enough. The Indie Kidly right. Podcast at gmail.com with the that right. in it. So the unlike the, the website, it. yes. Unlike the website, not matching the website at all. <laughs> it's bad <a> branding. <laughs> bad branding. <laughs> <laughs> the Indie Kidly Podcast at gmail.com. So, um, uh, you did so that on purpose so that people's emails wouldn't get through to us, didn't you, Marty? <laughs> oh yeah, that's, yeah. That was totally the goal of that. <laughs> um, it is also on the. If you can't remember it, or if you tr are trying to do it, it's also on our website. And what is our website, Elena? It's www.indiekidlitpodcast.com. No, that. <laughs> so. We'll see you very briefly um, uh, next time for our um, goal setting session for all of 2018. And um, we're looking forward to hearing what you guys are wanting to work on. And and maybe it'll actually help us figure out who the, uh, the guests for 2018 should be. So you guys should definitely tell us what you're trying to work on so that we can try to make sure that the guests that we have line up with the things that you're trying to get better at. Okay, very cool. And Perfect. we will see you next time. Bye-bye.